The calibration activities portrayed in this video relate to an initiative that has been active since 2011. It involves 40% of Australian universities. The main trigger was the inclusion in legislation that all universities and higher education providers must provide evidence of external benchmarking achievement of student learning outcomes, similar to external examination in some other countries. A key enabler to doing this effectively was calibration activities because the literature shows low inter-rater reliability, even among experienced academics. The subject or discipline in focus is accounting, who had previously developed a benchmark statement of threshold learning outcomes or standards. Participants are mostly senior experienced academic accountants with a handful of professional accounting practitioners and some representatives from the professional accounting bodies. Before this calibration workshop, participants have remotely assessed or graded the same three samples of student work. They've provided reasons for their judgments against w whether it met the standard or not and advised what improvements were needed. In this case, it was about communicating accounting advice and ideas. Judgments and reasons are confidentially entered via an online system. Also, participants have remotely compared their judgments, their reasons and advice with de-identified peers via the same online system. Now participants are aware that they and their experienced peers are not all of one mind. The first part of the video shows participants reaching consensus as a group or team assembled round a table in relation to one student's work. Participants are actively putting their case to peers around their table, listening to peers defend their views and having to come to a consensus judgment, which includes writing down the key reasons. The second part shows me facilitating a consensus reaching process, except this time the conversation is not across a table, but between groups on different tables, each opposing, defending the shared views of their table group again about that particular student's work. Um, two groups thought it was about a, in the you know, 78, 80, round about there. The other, this one here was a 48, 48. That's on student number one. Uh, so you, see, you still see a fair bit of variation. Uh, uh, so I think the, let's go with the group, both the one on the sh clear left. Yeah. Okay. So. Clear left, the interviewer. So go for it. Where's the team that, the team that said 48? Well, basically, we were saying that perhaps the person didn't actually fulfil their role as an interviewer. They might have been sort of, yes, communicating, but that they didn't actually do the job they were there to do. In other words, create discussion, and they seem to appear, oh, sorry, the students seem to just be reading a script and not actually engaging with discussion. We took it back to what is the expectation of the standard and the expectation of the standard is communicating ideas and communicating accounting advice. It wasn't about can they play the role of an interviewer and how well did they play the role of an interviewer. That was not the standard. So we, we believe that you know, on the things they were saying, we were ticking off some of the things that, that she was talking about. We believe that she had certainly provided accounting advice. She had she had assimilated information. She had presented that information and presented ideas, and she'd done it clearly and she'd done it concisely. Okay. So we, that's why we felt she met certainly mm -hmm. certainly more than met what the expectations were. The she, minimum expectations. But yeah. she wasn't on the far right hand side. <coughs> no, 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 no. Because she didn't go as deep as she could. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and around our table, we were just sort of deciding whether it was you know just over the pass yeah, or just did, under did. the pass. And I guess it was the role of the interviewer yeah. that we decided it was just under, but we take your point. Or I take your point. So <laughs> are you prepared to shift? To 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an acceptable standard now. Because it's it's not, the important uh, learning from it's that. Just it's just a pass. I because thought. she's still... Well, well, I've just been convinced that perhaps, yes, as an interviewer, that's not the role. We're supposed to be an accounting student. Um, and therefore perhaps go to 50, but no higher than that. So the, the other issue we had with it was in terms of that she 
basically had a prepared script and she read it. There was no convincing between it. She, she didn't try to, she didn't relate it back to their previous comments. She'd say, blah, 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 blah. So what do you think? And she didn't even have questions that might help them move into another question. And she didn't come back and lead on from those questions. So she thought there were no linkages and no connection there. Okay. Uh, Sprint? Yeah, I think there's two sides to that debate about one side is being overly scripted is a bad thing, but then the other side of that is being well prepared is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, I think we have to recognise that. You know, if you go into a, a meeting or something, you want to be well prepared. Um, I don't think we should penalise them for being well prepared. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think the scripted argument, um, based on our discussions, is, is something that. Um, we would hold against her, and we were. Our group thought she was the best of the three, and we rated her right at the top there. Okay, moving on. Um, the results for student uh, number two are uh, again one group said that there was much closer. They were much closer. So the group that thought that number two failed. Can't true. Wasn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so who was the group that thought that they failed? Maybe about forty. From what I've gathered, um, I think both of them, the majority here, think would be acceptable. Yeah. 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 So um, if I'm just going to put that about there, uh, probably student two is better than student one, agree? Or not? Sorry, Christine? Can we debate that because I came in okay. thinking that one was better than two. My yes, table right. persuaded me two was better than one. Now I've gone back to again thinking one is yeah. better than two. Because, <laughs> because, because I keep hearing these things and... Mm. I don't think there's anybody who disagrees. Well, don't you disagree? They all say number three was about yeah. the line. Hopefully, you've been able to observe three or four things that, that we experience at each workshop. First, the conversation is robust, but respectful and good-humoured. One reason for this is we are all from the same academic tribe, accounting. People actually have fun. Anyone with a view can air it. We take turns to speak. You know why? It's because in many cases we know each other from the academic research conference that our workshop immediately follows. Second, the multi-stage process helps develop understandings of the achievement standard. What helps most is reaching consensus on the small table group as a complete stage, and then the debate between groups in the whole room to reach consensus. The small group to whole room discussion occurs for each of the pieces of student work, each helping develop our understandings of standards. The pre-workshop remote grading and remote de-identified comparison of views helps too, especially to avoid groupthink. Third, the online system helps make views explicit, but safe to share because they are de-identified. The software can be used remotely and in the workshop. Fourth, the collegial process and use of exemplars means we've all developed our assessment literacy, our understanding of learning standards, and learned about good assessment practice. Finally, Setting the stage for all of this is crucial. As facilitators, we work hard by being explicit and role modelling, active listening, respecting diverse opinions. We focus on the evidence in the student work, not the person presenting a particular view. We admit how we've changed. I've recounted one particular example where we'd all miss something except one person, and that person persuaded their group who subsequently persuaded all the groups, and then all 39 are present at the workshop. We've done some experimental research to show that one workshop alone halves the standard deviation in marks. So, calibration is definitely worth doing.